We have UFC flyweight Tim Elliott who is joining us. He'll be fighting Joseph Benavides at UFC 172, April 26. Tim, thank you so much for joining our show. Hey, thanks for having me. And uh, what was it like for you to get that call to hear that you had an opportunity to fight one of the top contenders of the division? Uh, well, it's, it's nothing really new. My my first fight in the UFC, I fought John Dotson, so uh, I'm kind of used to fighting tough guys. I, I haven't fought anybody who's been out of the top ten uh, in my four fights in the UFC, so I just come to expect to, to get a fight good guys. And what do you see as your biggest challenge in facing him? Um. Just he has a lot more experience than I do uh, as far as being in the UFC goes. He's fought the best in the world, and and he's just been in the game a long time. And I'm fairly new, and I'm still learning every day. And uh, I feel like that's the one thing he'll have an advantage over me. Speaking of learning, uh, you know your last fight it didn't go your way. You faced Ali Bagatinov, who is another guy who's up and coming through the UFC ranks. He's as a title shot for the title shot next. Uh, but uh, what, what did you learn from that loss to him? Um, I, I went into that fight a little bit injured, and um, I probably should have said something instead of fighting, but oh. I needed the money, and you know, I, I didn't fight my fight. I was scared to throw any overhands. I was throwing straight punches the whole time, and that's just not my style. I'm, I'm a hook and uppercut and overhand kind of guy, and uh, I lost that in that fight, and I, I tried to box the guy who was a better boxer than me. So um, I'm not going to do that with Joseph Benavidez. Uh, one of the things that, I mean, when the flyweights were first introduced to the UFC and when it was first announced, it was it was kind of like Christmas morning to me, a very exciting time. I've always been a fan of the flyweights, about the way you guys move around, just the excitement you bring into the cage. But the fan response wasn't at first what I expected. A lot of fans were kind of uh, a little hesitant on it. Have you? Do you feel that that's changed now, that they're finally opening their eyes and realizing the excitement that comes with the flyweight division? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but when you're speaking, it, it's really uh, staticky. I can't, I couldn't understand anything you're saying. <laughs> Do you think that the flyweight division is getting the recognition now it deserves, as opposed to when they first, you guys first came into the UFC? Uh, yeah, we're still fairly new, and uh, you know, uh, I think the problem with the 25 pound division is just the American mentality. They all think bigger is better, and uh, they'd rather see two fat guys waller on each other than two guys who are active and and doing a lot of a lot of movement and uh, a lot of strikes, a lot of takedowns, a lot of scrambling. They're going to see, uh, you know, two big guys slug it out. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'll tell you, though, watching you guys go, it's a million miles an hour. It's always exciting. Uh, what's your normal training regimen like? I, I haven't changed much up for this camp. I, I stick to uh, the same program we have here at Grindhouse. Um, I, I don't have to do a lot of thinking. I have uh, James Krause in here. And, uh, and Gaston Reno, and they just tell me what to do, and, and I just do it. So uh, all I have to do is listen to my coaches, and I feel like I'll come out of this on top. Have you had to been, have, has that been a, a convenience that you've had for a long time or no? Because I know, you know, coming into this sport, when you're first starting in the UFC, some guys aren't making the money they need to. Has this been something that you're accustomed to, or are you just coming off of a job? Uh, I mean, it's... It's just fun for me. I, I enjoy every minute of it. Um, I wish that the uh, 25 pounders would get a little bit more recognition because that would mean more pay. But, uh, you know, I, I love what I do, and i got a great group of guys behind me. So it's, it's no pressure, and it, it's just all fun for me. You talk about those guys being James Krause, Zach Cummings. I mean, it seems like being the period of time that you guys have all come into the UFC has been a, around about the same time. What's it been like to take the journey along with some of your fellow teammates? Uh, I mean, it's been awesome, but at the same time, uh, in this sport, you have to be kind of selfish, and it's sad, but, you know, I was so excited to see James and Zach get into the UFC, but at the same time, when they got signed, the first thing that came to my head was, oh, no, I may have to fight on the same card as one of these guys, and I may not have them in my corner. And uh, and that kind of scares me, you know, because I, I love having James and Zach in my corner, and uh, the fear of not having my cornerman is, you know, it, it kind of plays a toll, but I feel like I'm in a situation now where I've taken these tough fights, and, uh, you know, if I if I had to fight on the same card as Zach or James, I would probably say no. Does, is that something that you've thought about a lot? I mean, the fact that, you see you're scared about it. Is it that important to who's in your corner and who's with and keeping that ritual on fight day? Uh, usually I would say no, but uh, all four of my fights, I've had uh, James in my corner. 
And the guy is just, he's incredible. He, he sees things that I can't see. He's so much smarter when it, when it comes down to breaking down fights than I am. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like it, it really is a big deal to have, to have James in my corner. And I, I hear on Twitter all the time people saying, oh, let's bring a UFC card to, to Kansas City and get James and Tim, you know, but I wouldn't fight if, if uh, they had a Kansas City card. Uh, none of my family is here in Kansas City, and, and my family will go travel to China to watch me fight. So it's not a big deal to me to get a fight locally. Um, I don't have any more fans here in Kansas City than I have anywhere else. So, uh, you know, it, it really is important to me to have James in my corner just because the guy is just, he, he's incredible when it, when it comes to breaking down things. And, and uh, I mean, if you've heard him say things in the corner to his guys while he's cornering, it's just, it's perfect advice. And, and it really does help, uh, you know, whenever you're in, when you're down, you know, having somebody that you can trust to tell you, you know, hey, you're down, you need to get your shit together and, and pick it up. And uh, he doesn't sugarcoat anything. He doesn't, he doesn't tell you you're winning if you're not, and he doesn't tell you you're losing if you're not. So I feel like that's very important to have somebody that you can put all your faith and trust in. And, and James is just one of those guys. And just one last question for me, because we do have to get going here. Um, you've been a wrestler throughout. That was kind of the background before you started MMA. What was it that really uh, got you into MMA? Um, my, uh, one of my wrestling coaches, uh, actually two of my wrestling coaches at the university of central Oklahoma, um, Cole province, he fought in the WC, fought Mike Brown in the WC and Jared Hess is a two-time Bellator finalist. Mm-hmm. Um, they were both fighting while I was in school and, uh, my style of wrestling wasn't very technical. I, I really had pretty poor wrestling. I, I beat guys just on sheer cardio and sheer toughness and going forward and, you know, they just told me that would be perfect for MMA, and, and I just kind of followed suit with what they told me, and it, it panned out. Well, great. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us, Tim, but unfortunately, we are all out of time for today.